to uh, demonstrate how we can load coordinate data into GIS. So um, basically a spreadsheet that contains a X and a Y coordinate. I will demonstrate it using this earthquake data set. Um, but there's many other uh, sources to this type of data. Historical, archaeological digs, they'll typically give you a coordinate of the find or lots of this type of things where you get coordinates of uh, locations and you then need to translate these spreadsheets with coordinates to dots on a map. So that's what we'll be covering. So I've googled earthquake coordinates and I get this USGS site here um, and um, it has uh, the latest uh, uh, earthquakes and we have just had this uh, um, powerful uh, earthquake in Europe um, what's interesting is that from this point of view is that we have our data and here we can go down and get real-time data so that's basically the last so-and-so many data and we can have them in different formats we can have them in KML or some of their own special formats and let's use the spreadsheet format so I say I want spreadsheet format and I want to have um, just from the last seven days all earthquakes with a magnitude of more than two and a half so I click on that data set and it will um, download my data set for me. Um, I can open it in Excel, which, uh, yeah, just so we can see what it is. So, and if you open it in Excel, we can see here that it's a format and because I'm in Denmark, it does get a bit confused over this type of data set where we have a comma as the delimiter between the fields but it is called comma separated value CSV and we also have um, in the data sets here we have a point as our decimal value which um, is not standard Danish but apart from that um, this is what CSV files look like and I can load them into Excel if I go in and say choose it and say data and then say to columns and move a delimiter of and then it can ask me what it is and I can say it's a comma and uh, I can then get the data into Excel like this. Um, so we can load the data into Excel. What I want to know is I'll note is that it has this first row here that contains the title of the columns. So we have a time, a latitude, a longitude, a depth, a magnitude, a magnitude type, uh, and so on, whatever they are. And um, this is the data we want to get in to QGIS. I'll just uh, close down the Excel. Save change no thank you. And um, I'll go into QGIS, should be in here somewhere. I'll just uh, refresh this uh, folder here, um, there, and hopefully there's a file called week something or rather down. There, so here we've got our data set. Um, if I just load it, um, I'll be a bit disappointed because what happens is that it just open it as a table and I can uh, open it and look in it um, but didn't create any um, dots or map for my mapping so I can do that but that's not really what I want to do what I want to do is I want to use this one the CSV loader add a delimited text and then browse to my data set um, which I have copied to my data folder. So in this dialog box we've got a lot of, quite a lot of criteria we can set on how we want to load our data is how is it delimited, um, 
how many rows is there in the stack you want to skip if there are any does the first row contain um, uh, uh, the name of the, of the attributes and does it use decimal separators um, is that a comma um, so if you have Danish data in it it should be able to um, so, so if you have Danish data in it it should be able to um, load it I'm not quite sure about that um, there's one thing at least you have to be aware of it is if it has thousand separators um, this one will not work and then it asks what attribute is our attitude and what is our longitude and if you don't want but just how the attributes we can just say no geometry but it has found latitude and longitude and we can say okay and it will ask what type of coordinate system is it and we know that this is a VGS so we choose that and now we have our uh, earthquakes 